Hello everyone, welcome to Diego Knows, I am Diego, and today we are going to talk about episode 5 of the first season of the original Sex and the City from the 1990s, back when the show was good. And I am here to offer you a straight man's point of view of the show. I am a big fan of Sex and the City, I've watched every single episode, including both movies, and uh, I always uh, felt that there was something lacking from these episodes when I watched them originally. Because me and my friends, uh, mostly girlfriends, would talk about the show all the time. But what I noticed that no straight guy's opinion was being represented in these shows. Okay, uh, the shows, the, the episodes that I saw, always uh, they always portrayed men as caricatures of men, of straight men, and not actual straight men. Okay, very few characters. They got it right sometimes, but very few times uh, did they ever uh, show a straight man acting like a straight man. They always showed him as dumb or stupid or abusive or, or whatever. You know, just stuff that, you know, wouldn't happen that way in real life. So I'm just giving in my two cents uh, to let you know what was realistic from a straight guy's point of view. What was realistic from the episode and what was not realistic in the episode. Uh, yes, I have a lot of complaints about the show, but this is coming from a place of love. I am a legitimate fan of the show. I did love the show. And I'm currently reviewing the new show and just like that. And every time a new episode comes out, I'll review it the next day. Okay, but well, this is the original show. So to start off with. All right, uh, this episode is uh, episode five in the first season. It's called The Power of the Female Sex. Now, this episode opens up with uh, Samantha and Carrie are at this nice restaurant called Balzac, which I guess is this posh, upscale restaurant in, in downtown New York. And they're trying to get in. They've been waiting 45 minutes. The place is jam-packed. Uh, they can't get a table. Uh, so they keep, uh, Samantha keeps harassing the hostess. Like, hey, you know, we've been waiting forever. Are you gonna seat us, you know? And Carrie makes, make, plays it off like this is a position of power. Like the most powerful person in Manhattan is the door is the hostess at Balzac. Because she has the power to seat you, okay? Like, like you can't just go somewhere else to, to eat, right? You got to go there, right? Uh, elitism, okay? But then once again, the Sex and City is about, about, about a bunch of rich, you know, New York women. Middle-aged women. Okay, so they're there. And um, let's see, a man would have to... Uh, they end up having to leave because they don't want to wait anymore. Samantha's like, you know, I used to be a hostess and this and that. And they, she actually tries to bribe the, the hostess with 20 bucks. But Carrie doesn't have 20 bucks. And uh, Samantha reveals that 10 years ago she used to be a hostess too. But she she wielded her power, you know, good-naturedly or whatever. whatever you know, she, I don't get it. But uh, anyway, so Carrie decides to go shoe shopping. And while she's there, uh, the guy at the store uh, cuts her credit card because apparently she doesn't have any money. Her credit's no good. Because of her shoe shopping. Uh, I guess that's her therapy. She buys way the hell too many shoes that she can't, you know, wear. Uh, luckily, one of her friends, another friend, because remember, Carrie knows everybody in New York. Even though you, you, they show up for one episode, then you never see them again. Uh, this, this lady shows up named Amelita. Now, Amelita, I think she's Italian. She speaks with an accent. I don't know for sure what she is. I'm guessing she's Italian. But she's one of these, like, like rich socialite women. And I don't, honestly, I don't get it. Because she, she's... Attractive, but not that attractive. And what I mean by that is that she's attractive for like a 45-year-old woman. Uh, but like a 25-year-old woman's standards, she's not attractive, okay? But, you know, she's, she kind of reminds me of like a, of an Italian Zsa Zsa Gabor, you know? Uh, you know, one of those rich people. Just, oh, my God, darling. Ah, ha, ha. You know, like that. She's like this party girl, this socialite, you know, like her. She doesn't have a job. Uh, Carrie actually, but she doesn't have a job. She just dates rich people. That's, that's, what she, that's her job. She dates a bunch of rich people and they pay for everything for her. They provide her her standard of living. They buy her gifts. They pay all of her bills. You know, and all she does is go out with them and she socializes and she goes to rich people's parties. And I guess that's, that's, there's people that actually do that. You know, that, that's what she does. Her name's Amelita. I, I forgot her last name. But she's there at the shoe store. Because uh, this, this is an upscale shoe store with, with her boyfriend, uh, Carlo. Carlo, who doesn't say anything. And uh, she actually shows up and agrees to pay for those shoes for uh, Carrie. And Carrie's like, oh, you don't have to do that. She's like, I'm not doing it. My boyfriend Carlo's paying for it, not me. How have you been, sweetheart, darling? You know, that kind of, sh you know, just pretentious. This is just party girl, you know? Anyway, the first thing she says after she, you know, agrees to pay for the shoes is she tells Carrie, um, oh, that's my boyfriend Carlo. He has the tiny little penis, but he knows how to use it. <laughs> Like, like, really? Is that the first thing you're going to tell someone, you know, when you first meet them, is that your boyfriend has a little dick? Really? Is that something that, that she needs to know? I mean, it, I, mean I, I can understand this is one of the four girls, you know, if this was Samantha or Miranda or Charlotte. But this is just some girl that Carrie knows somehow. We don't know how she knows her, but she knows her. Um, anyway, she's just in town, whatever. And uh, 
So uh, I guess she invites her to um, a restaurant or something for later. And that's that. Nothing much happens with that. Um, but she does, uh, Carrie does ponder this, the idea that Amelita just dates a bunch of, you know, rich people. And that's how she makes her living, just by dating rich guys. So she says, well, where do you draw the line between being um, a professional girlfriend or just being professional? Like, where's the line between, you know, just dating guys for money or just being a whore? You know, just being a prostitute, basically, you know. Um, so that, that's the thesis of this episode. So, of course, she talks to her girlfriends about it while they're playing poker or something at her apartment. And um, they all chip in. Of course, um, they start talking about how women use their sexuality to take advantage of men. Uh, but yet men are not allowed to use their sexuality. So it's, it's, it's just um, it's a double standard here. So what they're, what they're discussing here is that it's okay for women to use their looks to get things from men. Okay, But it's not okay for men to expect to get things from women by u them using their money. In other words, um, the, the, this is a classic argument okay, that we always have. Like women think like it's okay, you know, like if a woman looks good, it's okay for a guy to spend money on a woman, buy her dinner, take her out, take her, you know, spend all sorts of money on her. That's okay because she looks good. It's not okay for a guy to expect sex because he spent all this money on her. That's not okay. All right. So it, it's a double standard. Um... But, you know, you know, there's different ways to go about it, about that, you know. I mean, there's wealthy women out there that date men that, are, that are, don't have as much money as them. You know, I've been in that situation before. Also, there's, you know, there's, there's people that don't expect anything, you know. Uh, and there's, there's people that do all the time. You know, it, it all depends. Um, it's kind of the way society is. You know, this is under the assumption that, that all men are wealthy and that they can afford to spend money on beautiful women. Not all men can. You know, in the society that we're living in today, it's, it's really kind of hard to do that now. But this is New York. These are rich people's problems. So you know, this is the kind of stuff that they deal with all the time. Uh, personally, you know, you can't make anyone do anything. You know, I can't make a girl have sex with me if she doesn't want to. But at the same time, she can't make me take her out to a nice restaurant either if I don't want to go. You see what I mean? So it works both ways, you know. And, and it goes and backwards, you know, and the other way around too. You know, like, like if she, uh, you know, if she wants to fly me to the Bahamas... Or so I can always say no. I don't want to go. You know, I mean, it's like we you know we all have we all have the right to do whatever we want. You know, and if they, and she has a problem with, it, guess what? You ain't the only girl in the world. Just like I'm not the only guy in the world. You know, there's lots of different people out there. It's not just one. Okay. So anyway, uh, so Samantha uh, considers it a, a mutual exploitation. You know, women exploiting men, men exploiting women, blah blah. But it's kind of what, what makes the world go around. Charlotte talks about this painter that came into her gallery that she works at named uh, Neville Morgan. And apparently he's a famous painter. Charlotte's been following his work. Uh, he lives in upstate New York on a farm. And he just came in like once a year. He comes into Manhattan and checks out the galleries. And she's like fascinated by him. She's like, oh my God, I've seen all of your work. I've been studying you in art school. Oh my God, you're my favorite painter. And blah, blah. And she starts thinking about how like maybe if she can get this guy uh, an exhibit in her, arts, in her art gallery... You know, that would be like a big coup. Like this famous artist is going to display his paintings in her gallery. So she kind of wants to make that deal. He offers, so he says, hey, why don't you come over to my, my farmhouse, you know, in upstate New York, and we'll talk about it. So now Charlotte's scared. Oh, what if he wants me to fuck him? Like, what if he, uh, you know, what if he was only inviting me? You know, what if, if like, he's not going to show his paintings at my gallery unless I fuck him? That's what she's thinking, you know, which is the legit, legit reason to think, you know. But remember, she says that she's a fan of his, and she follows all of his work. We'll get to that later. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> of course, uh, at this time, uh, Skipper shows up to interrupt everything. He's knocking on the door. Miranda gets pissed off because, you know, he's, he's late. Uh, Miranda, does, Miranda does tell Charlotte, like, hey, if this guy propositions you when you get to the farmhouse, you let me know we will sue the fucking hell out of him. You know, because, of course, that's the way Miranda's head automatically is. You know, yeah, she's a bitch. All right. Um, but, I mean, it, 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 is, it is a legitimate concern. Okay, so uh, Skipper shows up, knocking on the door. Miranda's pissed off because he got there early. He wasn't supposed to show up until 11. He shows up at 10 o'clock, whatever. He's there. She says, hey, you're early. He's like, oh, well, it's okay. I'll, I'll just wait in the hall until you're done. You know, it's, it's, this is stupid. You know, and you're just like, I'm getting sick and tired of seeing this guy. You know, <clears throat> I understand why Miranda is dating him. Okay, I get it. He's a beta male. He's no fuss. You know, I mean, she's completely annoyed at him. She has no respect for this guy at all. No respect for him at all. Um... She treats him like he's, uh, you know, she actually says in this episode, she says that he's like a seal, okay? He's like a seal pup, you know, that, that you, you want to hit with a club, 
You know, like, like she's fucking him, but she's annoyed with him. She's tired of him. He's always bothering her. He's clum he bumps into her in this scene. Like he's got no sense of direction. He has no, uh, no self-esteem. You know, oh, it's okay. I'll just, I'll just wait in the hall until you're done. I don't mind. You know, like he's, he's just a fucking beta male. He's just, God, I just can't stand him. And the fact that, you know, they're not saying this in that episode, but I'm going to say it. Okay, I'm going to say it right now, okay? The reason Miranda's dating this guy, okay, is because she can't find a guy. She can't find a real a high value man. She can't get a high value man. Not with that attitude. She cannot get a high value. So this is better than nothing. Nobody says it, but I'm saying it. Okay, I'm a straight guy. I'm watching this interaction here. Okay, the fact that these girls aren't going to say it to her because they don't want her feelings. But the truth is, she can't get a better guy right now. She's not in that mindset. She's all about fucking. I hate men. I'm disgusted by men. Men are all pigs. Men are all superficial assholes that don't give a shit about me. All they do is look at a girl for her looks and judge her by that and da da da. But the truth is she's saying all this stuff because she is not getting her needs met. Men don't like her. Men do not like her. The men that she likes don't like her. So she's having to settle for this guy. All right? I know it. You know it. <clears throat> Skipper doesn't know it. Okay? But uh, the girls know it, but they're not going to say it because they don't want to hurt her feelings. And people that wrote this show know it, okay? <clears throat> but I'm calling it out. I'll fucking say it right now, okay? She's pissed off. She can't get a better guy. And she knows she can't get a better guy. Maybe un un unconsciously she knows it, but she, she knows she cannot get better than Skipper. At least not right now, okay? We'll get to that later when that happens. Okay, but yeah, he's, he's just a beta male piece of shit. Okay, anyway, uh, moving on with the story. Amalita shows up and invites Carrie out. Uh at this restaurant or something. Uh, yeah, she calls up Carrie. Hey, why don't you come over? So Carrie decides to go over there. So she goes to this nice restaurant here and, and Amelita's there. And the first thing Amelita does, she shows off her diamond bracelet that her boyfriend bought her. And then she introduces Carrie to this French guy named Gio or Jean or G. I think his name is G. I don't fucking know. Anyway, he's this good looking French guy. He's an architect. And he's in town for a couple of days, for like two days, just for the weekend. And she, uh, and she invite, you know, Amelita invites Carrie to sit down. Uh, with them at the table. So they start talking. Uh, they end up hitting it off. Uh, they decide to go out after the restaurant. Uh, they, start, they start walking around town, you know, talking and stuff. Uh, he's, he talks about how his business is. He's in Brazil. He's, he's got to go to Brazil in a couple of days he, to oversee construction of a new hotel. I guess he runs a bunch of hotels. And, uh, and Carrie just starts talking about how she doesn't have any money and how she has a shoe addiction, you know, and that, uh, you know, yeah, she's just, you know, she, she likes what she does, but, you know, it pays okay, but, you know, she can't help herself sell, spending all her money on shoes. Like, that's what she's talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the guy gets really turned on by that. But he keeps telling how beautiful she is. Oh, you're so lovely. A beautiful carry. Don't, doesn't it pay enough well writing for the newspapers and the magazines? You're so lovely. You're so beautiful. My goodness. I do not understand how a woman like you can be unattached. It, 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 it befuddles me. I do not understand so lovely you are. Your beautiful skin. Your precious eyes. You know, this fucker's just laying it on thick. Just fucking laying it on. Okay, and of course, Carrie's going, ah, you know. So I guess she, um, she agrees to see him again. Um, you know, and then when she says goodbye to him that night, you know, she's like, Ooh. she's floating away. Like they actually did that. Like, like they actually put her on a crane and then levitated her from the scene. So she's like flying away. She's like, oh, you know, yeah, like that. Yeah. I tell you, man, the show, at least, at least I don't think they broke the fourth wall. This is like the closest they came to breaking the fourth wall in this episode. Anyway, moving right along, Skipper shows up at her apartment and she's there and she's like in her, like un not underwear, but she's in her pajamas or something. And Skipper shows up and the first thing he does when she opens the door is like, you know, maybe I shouldn't be here. I'll just leave. And she's like, no, no, you already fucking woke me up. Knocked on the door. I already opened the door for you. Come on in. They start talking. It's the same shit from last episode. Oh, I don't think Miranda likes me. She doesn't respect me. She just treats me like I'm an object. I don't understand. Why doesn't she love me? Why doesn't she want to just do other things with me? All she wants to do is have sex and she kicks me out of the apartment. I don't understand why. I need to talk to her. You know, because, you know, he can't talk to her. You know, he needs, he needs Carrie to do it because, you know, he has, you know, no testicles. You know, that, that would require testicles to be able to talk to the girl that you're fucking and ask her why she treats him the way he does. You know, she does. But, uh, no, he, he has no testicles, so he can't do that. Uh, so he feels, um, 
he feels like Miranda's controlling him, you know, and, uh, you know, and then he's like, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I care so much about her, you know, I, when we're done having sex, I don't even shower. I don't even shower. And now Carrie, who was sitting next to him, now she's kind of like backing away, like, which is kind of gross. It is, you know, like, you know, I, I, whenever I complain about the show, most of the time what I complain about is how they're portraying straight men. And in this case, I'm done talking about Skipper. I'm done. I'm glad he's not going to show up anymore, you know, because um, this guy just does not represent us. Okay, this guy, this, this guy represents, unfortunately, these guys do exist. You all know guys like this. I know guys like this, okay? Unfortunately, they do exist, all right? But guys like this are usually pretty unattractive to women in general. You know, it's, you know if a guy like this manages to get a, a, a lay from a, an Ivy League educated woman, you know, single woman with no kids, you know, uh, in, in downtown New York on, on a regular basis, he's, he's won the lottery, okay? He's won the lottery, all right? And this guy's not acting like that. This guy is more like... This is the kind of guy that, you know, like a woman would like get turned off by him, you know? I mean, I'm a straight guy, all right? And me, I don't even want to hang out with a guy like this, all right? Because there's too many guys like this out there, you know? I don't know what to do. She doesn't love me and I love her so much. Shut the fuck up, you pussy. Gosh, you know? You can't respect a guy like this. Unfortunately, they exist. And there's too many of them, honestly. And there's even more now today in 2022 than it was back then, I think. I don't know. But yeah, we all know guys like these. These guys are unattractive. These guys are stupid. They're there and you know, they just, you know, these guys need to get like some sort of confidence. They need to do something that, that makes them feel good about themselves outside of women. Cause all Skipper values himself on is how women feel about him. That's his sole, total sense of value. It's how do a woman feel about me, okay? And unfortunately, if all you're doing is watching movies and watching TV shows, that's the fucking message right now, okay? Is that you need to be of love. Nothing else matters except love. Love's gonna solve everything. Yeah, yeah, and those are the guys that get cheated on, by the way. All right, so um, one thing that I did notice that's kind of weird this episode is that Carrie actually gets dressed in front of Skipper. Now, I know Skipper's a platonic friend, okay? But uh, I have platonic girlfriends. I don't get I don't get undressed and dressed in front of them. All right. Uh, the, the 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 times in my life where that has happened, you know, like the girl will be oh you know she'll look away or something, or at least she'll pretend she's looking away. Okay, or she'll leave the room while I'm getting dressed or something, you know. Or I'll say something, hey, I need to get dressed. Do you mind waiting outside? Something like that, you know. I'm not gonna fucking get undressed and dressed in front of a platonic girlfriend. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> If I'm doing that, uh, her and I are, are doing something. Okay, we're not, we're not, we're not platonic friends. All right, but anyway, but she does that. I thought it was kind of weird in front of Skipper. You can get undressed in front of Skipper, in front of Skipper. Like, how often do you do that? Anyway, all right. So um, that happens. Uh, Geo and Carrie they hang out in Central Park all day. You know, I guess they ride carriages and. She, 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 just, she has a really good time. We don't know what they're talking. They're just like, you know, it's a montage of them like doing cutesy things together as a couple, holding hands, playing with each other and shit in, in Central Park. It's so romantic. You know, you've seen it in every fucking chick flick. And then um, uh, Carrie narrates and she says she decides to break her rule about fucking a guy on the first day. She decides to fuck him on the first day because she said, well, in Paris, it's already tomorrow, so it counts. Anyway, so she ends up fucking him. And that's that. Uh... The next day, um, she, um, he's getting dressed. Uh, he, he's getting dressed. He's, he's got to fly. He's got to go, go to uh, Brazil. So she wakes up. He's already dressed. He's already packed everything. He tells her goodbye. I had a great time. Uh, you know, and he says, I'll call you. And then he leaves. He says, he says go ahead, order room service, whatever. You know, you got the room for, you know, until the afternoon. You know, stay in bed. It's fine. You know, I got to leave. I'll call you sometime. And then he leaves. And then she realizes she never even got his fucking phone number. <laughs> like she has no way of contacting him. No email, no phone number. And he doesn't have hers either. So, uh, but she does notice an envelope. And in that envelope is a grand. So he left some money for her. So now she doesn't know whether to be flattered, whether to keep the money, or whether to, you know, give it away. Or, or this mean, does this mean that he thinks she's a prostitute? Because she doesn't want him to think that. Does she see herself as a prostitute? Is that what she's doing? She's prostituting herself? Is that what all this was? You know, uh, my answer to that is no, she's not a prostitute. Carrie's not a prostitute. She did not expect to get paid for having sex, but he paid her. Now, there's different ways you can look at this, okay? This is how I look at it, all right? I think a guy like that, with that much money, 
who can just drop a grand at the drop of a hat. Um, and the fact that Carrie is not a professional prostitute, okay, he could have gotten a professional prostitute if he wanted to, all right? Amelita could have got him a professional prostitute, all right? A porn star looking prostitute, but that's not what happened, all right? I think what happened, Carrie sees her stuff, oh, he thinks I'm, I'm a hooker, and that's why he left the money. But what I think, what I think is this guy was just being nice. Okay, because you got to remember, all Carrie talked about that first night was how she doesn't have any money. How she has a shopping addiction and how like her job pays well, but she spends it all on shoes. And I think that he just felt sorry for her and he wanted to, you know, make her feel good. So here's some money, buy some shoes. I think that's what it was. We don't know for sure. Carrie thinks it's for the sex. He's paying her for the sex, you know, that they had. I don't think it is, you know, because he could have paid, you know, I'm not putting anything against Carrie, okay? But Carrie is not a professional sex worker. Professional sex workers look different. And a guy with this kind of money, with the means that he has, is not going to get an above average looking girl. He's going to get a super above average looking girl to pay for sex. He's not going to get Carrie. All right? So I don't think that he ever saw her as a prostitute. I think he was just, you know, she's always complaining about not having money. So I'm just going to drop her a thousand bucks. You know, maybe she can buy some shoes with it. That's what I think. But anyway, she blows it all up because that's the way Carrie is. She invites all her girlfriends over to the hotel room. They all start, you know, ordering room service, having breakfast. You know, uh, Samantha talks about how it's, uh, uh, prostitution is just an exchange of power. You know, like there's other ways to prostitute yourselves besides just getting paid directly for it. You know, guys can take you out to dinner. They can take you to the theater. They can buy you nice things and then expect sex for it, you know. And, and Samantha says, oh, you know, sex is power and money is power. So all I'm doing is I'm exchanging sex, you know, one form of power for another form of power, you know, makes sense. You know, I mean, it is, I mean, it is the second oldest, you know, occupation. It's not the first. Okay. The first is hunting. Okay. The second oldest occupation is prostitution. All right. Profession. Sorry. The second oldest profession is prostitution. The first is hunting. No food, no fucking. All right. So, um, so they have this big exchange about that, you know, and of course, uh, Miranda, she name drops, uh, Camille Paglia. Now, for those of you who don't know, Camille Pagula is this super ultra liberal, I hate fucking men, feminist, butch, transgender, Ivy League, fucking uh, gender studies professor. Okay? I'm talking fucking cut the dick off. And now she identifies as transgender as well, as if that wasn't enough, right? You know, anyway, yeah, she's just well known in academia, uh, academia as this fucking man hating lesbian, fucking feminist power, men are all pieces of shit, you know. Uh, you know what I would like Camille Paglia to do? Uh, you know, instead of, you know, when, when we go to war again, which eventually will happen, you know, I would like for her to just, you know, take my spot. Instead of me getting drafted, I'd like her to get drafted because she's a man, right? And uh, I like her to go out there in the front lines, not back in the rear with the gear cooking, you know, and, and taking care of the sick patients, you know, the wounded, the wounded soldiers. No, I want her in the fucking front lines with me, next to me, when the bombs are going off and the bullets are flying in our direction. And I want to see how much of a man she really is. I, re I would really like that, you know, equal rights, equal, equal responsibilities, you know. Uh, I would like, I would like that. I would like every feminist to take our spot. And when the draft goes on, have all the feminists go to war and have all the men stay behind. And we'll work. Don't worry. We'll do our, our part. We'll work. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do all the stuff that women were doing before the war. We can do it. What can they do that we can't other than have kids? You know, what can they do? Let, let them do the fighting. Let them defend democracy. Let them defend the people in this country from invaders or from threats. Let them do it. L let all the liberal uh, man-hating feminists do it. Take care of it. Because they're the real men, right? Not us. We don't do shit, right? N nothing in this whole world exists because of men. It's all because of the women, right? Of course. Of course it is. All right. So, so anyway, uh, Amelita. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, yeah. Uh, Miranda calls Amelita a hooker with a passport <laughs> because all she does is fly around the world fucking rich guys and living off of them, you know. Okay, well, I'm not saying she's not. Uh, Miranda and Samantha, they fight about uh, feminism. You know, uh, you know, like I said, you know, Miranda sees this as, you know, it's wrong. You know, like, like women have all the rights that men have, you know, but they have none of the responsibilities that men have. Go figure, right? Like I said, you want to be a man? Be a man. You got you, you to gotta do all the shit that, that sucks to be a guy. You got to do that too. And then, otherwise, it's not feminism, right? 
Okay, so uh, so there's that, and of course Samantha's like, hey, there's nothing wrong with accepting gifts for some pussy. There's nothing wrong with you know giving it up for to get some money back. You know, nothing wrong with that. And there's not as long as, long as it's all consensual, fine. You want to spend money on a prostitute, fine, do it. Uh, Neville uh, Neville Morgan finally. Um, uh, Charlotte goes to Neville Morgan's uh, his farmhouse in upstate New York to view his artwork that he that he's gonna she's gonna try to get him to show display his artwork at her gallery because he's a big draw right like I said she's been following his career she knows everything about his artwork well she gets there to the farmhouse and he explains to how he is uh, his what he's working on right now is he likes to paint cunts now here Charlotte was afraid that he was gonna like sexually harass her but no 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 he uh, he has a bunch of paintings of vaginas because he likes to paint vaginas. He doesn't call it a vagina. He calls it a cunt. You know, the, the appropriate word, right? Uh, and uh, then, of course, his wife comes in there, offers Miranda some cookies and some lemonade. And he starts showing her cunts. The beautiful cunts that I paint. The world is all about cunts. It's a cunt. The world is one big cunt, and we're all just trying to fuck it. And that's what my artwork is about. Cunts. And Miranda's kind of like freaked out. Well, what I'm guessing is, like, okay, Miranda, if you've been following his work, if you know this, that if you know what what he paints, you know, then you didn't know he was painting pussies, like that. He's doing a vagina show, okay. And then he mentions that, like, he knows personally every single vagina he's painted. Okay, dude, this is weird shit here. Okay, and the fact that, that Charlotte did not know this about him, because of course he's acting like it, he, he does it every day. Like, oh yeah, everybody paints cunts. It's no big deal. I'm just one of many. Why are you making a big deal out of it? Like, because people don't fucking do that, okay? I went to art school, okay? You don't fucking paint cunts. Nobody does that. I mean, you can do that in private, but no one makes a fucking gallery of painting cunts, okay? The worst thing I ever saw in art school was a 4D demonstration where some dude, his class project for 4D was he just got in the middle of the room there and he just fucking jerked off in front of everybody. And that was it. That was considered art, okay? And none of us saw that coming, but you know, I mean, no pun intended. But uh, you know, that, that's what it was. Okay, that's the weirdest thing I saw. I didn't see like an, an exhibit of a bunch of vaginas. I mean, that's just stupid. It's just, they're trying to play it for, and it's not funny, it, it's not. It's just weird. It's like, okay. And of course, the fact that Charlotte's the only one that, that thinks this is weird. No one else thinks this is weird. Everyone's just going with it. Come on. What kind of world is this that we're living in here? This is not, it's not realistic. Any normal person would be freaked out, but they're like, what the fuck are you doing? You call yourself a, a fine artist? Really? You're painting pussies? And you think that other people want to see that? They want to see pussies? Uh, watercolors of different pussies? You think that's going to like pack, pack the gallery or something? You think that's going to get you good reviews? You think people are going to buy that? They want to hang that up on their wall when their kids are walking around? Come on. This is stupid. This is bad writing. Bullshit flag raised right now. Um, and then, of course, what does he do now? He propositions her. I would love to paint your cunt. Think about it. Like, that's something you say the second time you've ever fucking met somebody. Hey, let me paint your pussy. No, I'm not, I want to paint a, a, a painting of it for the world to see. Like, you, are you really going to ask someone that, like, the second time you've met them? You're going to ask them that? You know, kind of like, you know, just like, like talking to, to a girl that you haven't seen in, in 10 years. Hey, you want to be the surrogate for our, 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 my, me and my, my gay husband, our, our, our surrogate for our child? You want to do that? Like, that's not something you ask somebody, like, I, you know, just off the street. It's like, you don't ask this, this, this woman. She works at an art gallery, all right? She works at a fucking art gallery. Okay, you don't go up to a woman that works in art. Hey, let me, I want to paint your pussy and put it on display for everybody to see. Like, that's not something you do. But this show is making it look like, oh, yeah, it happens all the time. What's the big deal? Diego, why are you reacting this way? It happens all the time. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And I went to art school, okay? Uh, so, anyway, so I guess Charlotte agrees. I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, um, uh, Carrie goes to... Um, Carrie goes back out again uh, to um, Balzac with Samantha. And there's the hostess again that has all the power. And, of course, they can't get seated again. So Charlotte decides to leave. I mean, sorry, Miranda, not Miranda. Samantha and, um, and Carrie decide to leave. Carrie notices uh, Amelita there again. She's sitting with a different group of people this time. Uh, and she's like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, come over here. Look at this. Carrie, darling, so wonderful to see you again. You know, like just 
be doing our old fucking thing. And when she introduces him to another guy this time, uh, this guy, uh, I don't fuck his name. What the fuck's his name? I don't know. Mario, Mario. All right, and uh, she says, oh, he, he just invited us to uh, uh, Benedizia, Italy. We're going to go there for the film festival. You have to come with us, darling. Oh my God, bring your laptop with you and you can write about everything. How can you say no to this? You know, the, the usual shit, you know, that she does. She's getting annoying, okay? And um, what do you call it? The guy, of course, looking at her like a piece of meat, Mario. You know, and Carrie feels like she's, uh, like Amelie's been pimping her out. So she decides, nah, nah, nah. And she leaves, good call. Good call, okay? Because I think in a lot of ways, um, Amelita is pimping her out. I think Amelita would would normally fuck those guys herself and take the money. But since she's there with her boyfriend, you know, with the little penis, because remember she mentioned he had a little penis. Um, uh, what's the fuck's his name again? Carlo? Yeah, Carlo. Then she can't uh, without hurting his feelings. So she's just, she's finding girls to keep, to keep her rich friends happy. So eventually, she'll, it'll come around again. Well, she'll actually will sleep with those guys for money. But you know, Amelita's not that great look. I mean, she's okay. She's not She's not a fucking great look. I wouldn't go to war with Troy for her, okay? I wouldn't. Hey, sorry, man, straight man's opinion. I mean, I'm sure there are guys out there that, that are attracted to her. Not me, especially not with that, oh my God, darling, man. Like if I had to put up with that all night long, I'd be, I'd get the fuck out of there. You know, go find your own fucking gigolo or some shit. Um, you pay for it. I ain't paying for it. Okay. Um, so yeah, Carrie feels she's being pipped out, so she leaves. Uh, she goes to the bathroom. The hostess is there, and she asks Carrie for a tampon. I guess she had an accident. So Carrie, luckily, Carrie has an extra tampon in her purse and gives it to her. So from then on, that hostess is indebted to Carrie. So from now, then on, they don't have no him, her, Carrie, and uh, Samantha have no problem getting a, getting seated at Bosiac anymore. The hostess will always take care of them from now on because Carrie helped her out when she needed that tampon. That's the message. That's the moral of the story. Okay. Uh, uh, after that, uh, they go to uh, Charlotte's exhibit. Of course, uh, that guy, uh, Morgan, or whatever the fuck his name is, he, uh, he, he did paint uh, Charlotte's pussy. So they're, they have an exhibit of all these pussies, all these cunts. Cunts, sorry. He used the word cunt. Neville Morgan used the word cunts, not pussies. There's, uh, there's uh, portraits, paintings of all these uh, cunts. And yes, one of them is Charlotte's. And uh, of course, the girl, which one's you? And then later on, we find we actually find out. Actually, uh, Charlotte actually shows them which one is her. Charlotte actually, yeah, she she went all uh, gynecologist for this guy. And uh, yeah, Charlotte, what, what people do for money. What people do for money. I'm sure she, I think she got paid. I think he offered to pay her. I don't know how much he paid her, but you know, he paid her something. All right. Uh, one thing I got to mention is Carrie's wearing this gi, this Japanese gi that looks like fucking Bozo the Clown wore it. I, I couldn't, I couldn't even look at the paintings or the cunts. I, I couldn't get my eyes off of what the fuck Carrie was wearing. You know, um, I, I don't know too much about female fashion. In fact, uh, I never watched this show for the fashion. Okay. Cause I'm a guy. I don't, I don't pay attention to that shit. But Carrie wears some of the most fucking crazy fucking outfits. All right. And the only reason I even bring that up is, is normally I don't notice that stuff, you know, but the only reason I bring it up is because Carrie dresses like a fucking clown. You know, like she buys her clothes the same place that Pennywise the Dancing Clown buys his clothes. All right. Because she looks fucking ridiculous. And I'm sorry. Like I said, I don't, I don't, most guys don't pay attention to what women are wearing. Okay. But in this case, Carrie wears some fucking cartoon clothes. Like this is shit from a fucking Hanna Barbera cartoon that she wears, all right? And you just can't help but not notice it. Like, what, what? Normally I wouldn't notice what a woman's wearing, you know? I can't tell you the designer or, or what, what type of gown it is or anything like that, you know, or how much it costs or what the label is. I couldn't tell you. Or where you have to go to buy something like that. I could not tell you that stuff or what size it is. But if, if a woman's dressed like a fucking clown, I'm gonna notice it. And it's gonna be hard for me not to look, all right? And I can't help what fucking Carrie's wearing. She's wearing like a like a Japanese gi, but it's covered in purple and flowers. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Like, I, I can't even like look at the, the paintings. I'm, I'm looking at this. And, and Carrie's always dressed like this. She's always wearing something weird. But, you know, oh well. Oh well. Uh, like I said, I'm not the target audience for this show. Okay. And one, one good thing uh, about this episode is they do play uh, that song that uh, I, I like to swing dance. All right. 
one of the funnest things I can do is swing dance. You know, we're jumping around, jump jiving. Then you, uh, you know, well, one of the songs that I like to dance to uh, when you're swing dancing, um, Goody Two Shoes by Adam Ant is a good one too. But uh, one of the songs I like to dance with uh, is called You and Me and the Bottle Mix Three Tonight. Dun, 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 Cause it's you and me and the Bottle Mix Three Tonight, you know. And they're playing that song at the art gallery. So that was cool. So they got the rights to that song. I love that song. That's a swing dancing song. You know, I love to swing dance, you know, to dress like in the 1940s and, and throw women around. So it's, it's awesome. It's fun. It's fun. If you haven't done it, I highly recommend doing it. It's really fun. Um, so, yeah, and that ends that episode. So uh, one, one of the better episodes, it was just kind of there. Uh, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for us to get to the really raunchy stuff, okay? I'm waiting for us to get to the, to the really good drama stuff, you know, which is coming later. At this point in the show, they're still trying to find this footing. Like I said, it's only episode five. They're still trying to find their footing. They're just trying to figure out where they're going to go with the show, um, you know, and, and there, there's no guarantee that we're going to get a second or third or fourth season, which they eventually did. So they started coming up with other ideas, you know. Right now, we're still in the, okay, uh, girl meets a guy, girl fucks a guy, girl finds something wrong with a guy. Boom, next episode, rinse and repeat, you know. Uh, we're still there right now. Uh, so anyway, so anyway, I'm going to keep watching the show and I'll review the other episodes as they come along. All right. Thank you for watching this.